to uh, um, solder your stained glass panels or sun catchers. Um, let's start with the basics. I've got my panel over here ready. It's all been foiled, squared, framed, ready to go. You'll need a soldering iron. There are various manufacturers and various styles. Some of them need a rheostat, which controls the temperature of them. Some of them don't. I've got one over here. This happens to be a choice um, brand. And every year I treat myself with a brand new iron because after a year, they start looking like this. And most of the time, you can buy new tips for them. There's nothing wrong with them, but most of the time, I'm not able to get the little, where is it on this one, that little nut out. So I just buy a new one. They're like $30, $35, something like that. So this one does require a rheostat. Um, you run them typically, depending, the higher the number, the higher the temperature. This one I've got set right now, right at 5. Once I get to soldering, I'm going to crank that up to 6 or 7. But right now I'm just going to do a tack solder, so I don't need it real, real warm. The older wellers, let me get over here to these. This is an older weller, and it actually, the temperature is controlled by the tip itself. This nut comes off and you can change the tips. These are some of the tips that you can see, different widths of diameter for them. If you look at the end of it, it has a number. 7 stands for 700. You can get 600, you can get 800. Um, I believe the one I have in there right now is an 800. I was soldering some lead with it a couple weeks ago. So you just change the uh, tip in there and that controls the heat on the older wellers. Uh, you can see I've got like a whole bag of tips. Soldering stand. Um, I do have, I didn't mention this, I've got my iron in a stand doesn't really matter. It's like a cast iron, so it's not going to tip over. You don't have to use one of these. You can lay it down on a piece of metal on your workbench, but I find that the, this is well worth it. It keeps it up out of the way. Um, the heat transfers up it. And then I've got a natural sponge, not a synthetic one, but a natural, just car wash type of sponge. And I've got it just soaked with plain old water. Nothing special on that. You can use gloves if you want to. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. If you have a cut, and you will talk about flux here next, if you get flux in your cut, you will feel it. If you touch your face, it'll burn. It's kind of an acid type of thing, and you do need to use flux to get your solder to stick to the foil. So the types of fluxes we have, this is just what I dug out of my box down there. There's liquid flux, all different brands, all different styles. I think this one is called Ruby Red. I'm not sure. Um, the liquid fluxes I don't care for. They seem to sputter and splatter a little bit more. Again, it's personal choice. Whatever you use, whatever you get used to, whatever you like, totally personal choice. Doesn't really matter. My go-to, I buy a gallon at a time, is classic gel flux. To me, it doesn't smoke. It doesn't sputter as bad. Um, it's easy to go on just using a regular brush. I've got a flux brush here. They're a little stiffer with the bristles. You can use paint brushes if you want to, little paint brushes that you get at the dollar store. These to me are just a little bit too long, and so I just trim it off so that it's just a little shorter. doesn't really matter. That's what works good for me. Um, another thing that you will want to get eventually, if you don't have it in your arsenal, is a sal ammoniac block. And this one is literally probably 15 years old. So what you use these for, I usually put a little dibble of uh, flux on there. And when your iron starts looking a little cruddy and yucky, then you just rub it Put the flux on, give it a little rub. You don't want to breathe this. You want to have a good fan going. Rub it on there. It's going to clean that tip off, any crud that's on there, and then just wipe it on your wet sponge, and you'll have a nice, shiny, clean tip again. 
so I don't know whenever it starts looking cruddy like my old ones then that's when you want to use your salimony F block definitely worth having one of those in hand and then it comes to the solder and there's these are three different four different styles of solder we have 50 50 different brands I honestly can't see any type of advantage one over the other it's just whatever you get used to I suppose if I had to uh, Canfield is probably the the cleanest metal solder but I don't buy it for the price I I've always used the other stuff I do like um, Victory White which I don't have here right now but Victory White is another really good um, brand for solder so we have 50 50 we have 60 40 we have 6337 we have lead free uh, lead free if you're using jewelry or anything that will come in contact you definitely want to use lead free it does not flow very well it looks more pewtery color than what you're going to have with your other solders um, just harder to make it look nice I hate it I absolutely absolutely hate it hate it hate it hate it hate it hate it um, the 50-50 I use when I'm tack soldering my pieces. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tack them all in place. And then I'm going to go back and do a flat solder. And that's when I use the 50-50. The 50-50 takes a higher temperature to melt. Um, that way it gives me a nice base for my, my solder to flow onto. And then when I'm ready for my good decorative um, round bead on the front, then I'll go in with the 60-40. It takes a lower temperature to melt it. And that way the 6040 is a nice flat surface, and then the 6040 I can build up. 6337, and at one point somebody was selling Quick Set, and I'm sure it's probably 6337, but that's used for decorative soldering. It just sets up really, really fast. So takes a very low temperature to melt, um, sets up really fast. And I usually use that when I'm trying to do peaks and, and some special full, special decorative soldering type of stuff. So that gives you a quick rundown on the tools and equipment. Again, your soldering iron, flux, and solder. And those are the three main things. What we're going to get into next is I'm going to get set up and I'm going to start tack soldering all of these little pieces together where they meet. I went through and I've got about a sixteenth of an inch gap if I can get a picture of this without the shadows kind of evenly spaced you want that gap so the solder can flow down in between your pieces so I've kind of gone through everywhere I don't know how well it's really showing but um, I've kind of just spaced out as evenly as I can to get a gap around all of them and get it set up ready to go so with that I've got um, a couple things that I'm going to talk about as I solder and I've got my horseshoe nails pointing there so that I remember to talk about it but we're going to start tack soldering this in the next video so let's get uh, set up and get going <music>